properly operated mud tanks is something that comes with experience. This experience comes from a number of hours of on-the-job training from a competent trainer. The idea of mud tanks is to be able to contain, maintain, and reuse the drilling fluid in a cost-effective manner. To this day, there are a lot of operations which opt for the use of sumps to contain their drilling fluid. Drilling muds these days are an ever-changing technology. Each mud company spends millions developing their own versions of generic mud types. Due to the high cost of drilling muds and additives, oil companies want to maintain the least amount of mud as possible in order to get the job done. The idea is that drilling fluid would be stored in an area where the rig mud pump would have a readily available fluid to cool the drill bit and remove drill cuttings from the hole, while providing stability to the formations that are drilled, and to hold back any formation pressures. The drilling fluid is taken from the mud tank by a pre-charge pump, so the rig pump will have continuous volume. From there, it is pumped through, through the drill pipe and out of the jets in the drill bit, and back up outside of the drill pipe carrying with it the drilled cuttings. Once it reaches surface, it will flow up through a BOP or a diverter and flow line and back to the shale shakers where the large cuttings will be removed by different size mesh screens. The solids go into a bin to be removed by a wheel loader or into a sump. The fluid passes through the mesh screens and goes back into the mud tanks and flows through the mud tanks back to the suction tank where the pre-charge pump sends it back to the rig pump. This is a closed loop system. Once the fluid passes through the mesh screens it usually enters into a sand trap which catches all of the larger particles and the fluid flows over the top of the compartment and enters the shaker tank. This is usually the tank right below the shakers. There will be some sort of agitation in this tank, usually just a mud gun, which is a nozzle that has mud forced through it so that it has a lot of pressure. This jet is usually on the bottom of the tank so that it can stir or agitate the fluid. There is also a way for the fluid to bypass through the tank into a settling tank. Usually you want the least amount of agitation in the shaker tank because you want the larger particles to settle out before they reach the suction tank. The skimmer is usually raised up quite high in this tank to allow the greatest amount of particles to settle out. The settling tank is the next tank in the system and will have an agitator and a mud gun in it. An agitator is a large fan-like object which is attached to a long shaft connected to a motor on the top of the mud tank. The idea of the agitator is to lift the fluid from the bottom of the tank and to help roll or mix it to make it consistent. On smaller rigs, the settling compartment will also have a degasser in it, which is used to separate gas from the drilling fluid so that the gas can be burned off into a flare pit. It is possible to have a number of settling tanks on bigger rigs. The suction tank is a tank which has the ability for the rig pump to suck out of it. This tank's fluid goes directly down hole. Depending on what products you are mixing, you may want to mix them right into this tank so they go straight down hole. Sometimes you may want to mix the product in the tank just before the suction tank to allow it time to blend and be more consistent. The agitator and mud guns should be running in this tank at all times. As the fluid goes from tank to tank, the level of volume should get lower and lower. This is an indication that you have skimmers set from highest to lowest to allow the solids to settle out. Whenever using a centrifuge, however, you want to suck out of the sand trap or the shaker tank and discharge into the settling tank or the suction tank. Doing this may cause the fluid to flow backwards through the mud tanks. This means that the centrifuge is out pumping the rig pump. You may want to blend the lighter mud from the centrifuge overflow into the settling tank. This may prevent pumping light mud down hole which could induce a kick. 
we highly recommend that you do not open the bypass on the shale shakers. This will allow the solids to bypass the shale shakers and go directly into the mud tanks. There are cases, however, where you may want to reuse LCM product, etc. And the only way to do this is to open the bypass. We do recommend that you use a vacuum to suck up the solids from the possum belly of the shale shaker or discharge them into the sand trap if you are not sucking out of there with the centrifuge. The shale and particles from inside of the possum belly will get caught into the feed pump screen box which will affect the performance of the centrifuge and may be a billable service call if we have to come out to clean it out. It's always good practice to suck out of a different tank than you are overflowing into with the centrifuge as the pump will always suck the lightest fluid first. This will affect the cut point of the centrifuge and the centrifuge will miss a majority of the fluid passing through the mud tanks. If you have found this valuable, please forward it along to your co-workers and colleagues that may benefit. Thank you and have a great day.